Hello and welcome to the 13th of our ACCA F5 lecture recaps. This one was on budgeting, so this is our introduction to budgeting. So let's look first of all at objectives. Remember that our budgets should support our corporate objectives. So our corporate objectives may be profit maximization, could be maximizing earnings per share, or could be maximizing the growth of the company. So whatever those corporate objectives are, your budget must seek to achieve them. Remember that these will be different from unit objectives, say maybe for a division or a section. Unit objectives, well these will depend on the type of unit you have. Remember that also it will change if they're a not-for-profit organisation. So they'll depend on the scenario, they'll depend on the division itself. Remember that there will be primary goals and there will be secondary goals. Your secondary goals will support your primary ones. So the primary objectives will be the, the core objectives, the ones you must achieve. So any secondary objectives must support those. And all of this must ensure goal congruence. Goal congruence is making management and employees work together to achieve whatever goals are in place. So managers and the organisation must have the same objectives. The planning or control cycle. Remember we talked about this and said the first thing to do is identify your objectives as we've just discussed. Then we need to identify potential strategies to achieve those objectives. We'll evaluate those strategies. We'll collate all the alternatives that we could have done. So collate all of those before implementing our long-term plan. So putting one of those strategies into place to implement the long-term plan. We then want to measure the results. And lastly, respond to any divergences from the plan. So learn this control cycle because that could be a discussion question on the paper. System objectives. Remember that we must have systems in place to achieve the objectives. But why have a system in place? Well, as we've said, we must have it there or else we won't achieve our organisational objectives. We also want to try to compel planning to make our managers plan to communicate ideas or plans throughout the organisation. So having a system of communication to ensure that everyone's working in the same direction and they know what we're trying to achieve. To coordinate the activities. If there's no system in place, there'll be no coordination. To have responsibility accounting. Remember, you shouldn't be responsible for something that you can't control. So that's the key to responsibility accounting. Only being responsible for things that you can control. So the system objectives should ensure that there is a system of control in place. And it should lead to motivation for employees. If you set your targets correctly, the system should motivate your employees. However, it can lead to some conflicts. What that could be is during the setting of the budget, you could find that there's a lack of detail. You could find that a manager seek to build slack into the budget so that they can achieve it more easily. It could be inflexible, so it may be unresponsive to changes, and it could be uncoordinated, so that different divisions don't know what the other is doing. When it comes to implementing the budget, well, they may just focus on the minimum that they have to do and not worry about anything after that, and it can lead to short-termism. So short-term focus will lead managers to maybe not look at the long-term effects of what they're doing. Lastly, again, if you're implementing the budget without communication, that can cause problems within the organisation. When it comes to setting the budget, we need to consider that if the budget or targets are too high, this is called an aspirations budget, but if you can't meet it, there's no point in having it in place. It can then become demotivating. So an aspirations budget may be too high for employees to meet and therefore becomes demotivating. If it's too low, on the other hand, well, again, it can be too easy. And that means that there's no sense of achievement when you actually get to the end and achieve what you were supposed to in the budget. Is there a solution to this? Well, maybe you should have a moderate budget. However, this may also encourage slack. So a moderate budget may encourage slack, may encourage managers to build slack into the system. So different ways in which you can set the budget. We talked about an imposed budget. 
So an imposed budget is a top-down approach. It's set by management and not employees. So the senior management will set an imposed budget. On the plus side of this, well, you can incorporate the strategic plan because those senior managers will be well aware of what the organization is seeking to achieve. So it will incorporate that. It'll also use um, better coordination. Again, because those senior management have an overall view of the firm, they'll be better able to coordinate the different divisions. And also it's going to be quicker. The senior management set the budget, impose it on the employees, that will be quicker. Also, they will have more experience. Those senior managers, more experience, more expertise, maybe they should be in charge of setting the budget. However, on the downside, it can lead to low morale because you're imposing that budget on the lower employees. The staff may not accept it, so the staff may not accept that budget, and therefore that will cause problems. The budget may be seen as a punishment. Okay, so the budget could be seen as a punishment because it's too hard to achieve. A participative budget, well, this is bottom-up budgeting. So this is set by the lower staff and then approved by management. On the plus side of this, well, the staff will know the departments potentially better than the senior staff. It'll lead to higher motivation because they can set targets that are achievable. And it will lead to more commitment because they'll feel that they have had a part to play in setting the budget. In addition, it'll also be more realistic because obviously the employees will want to set targets that they can achieve. On the downside, well, it can be time consuming. It's management by committee effectively. Also, could it be changed by the senior management? So the employees set the initial budget, but then senior management come along and change it. And that will lead to resentment within the lower management levels. It also supports empire building. So what I mean by that is people within their own department setting their own budget and controlling entirely their own little area, building their own little empire. And that was our session on budgeting.